Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the latest news on the Partygate inquiry into Boris Johnson's lies as it seems to be... <laughs> There's further delays. And the process seems to have been set up to make it more difficult to get full and frank witness statements. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So when MPs voted to hold an inquiry into whether Boris Johnson deliberately misled Parliament over what he knew about Downing Street parties last spring, there was a general feeling that it would report in the autumn. In fact, although Boris Johnson fell in July, it was thought by Tory MPs that they'd have had to have gotten rid of him in September anyway if they hadn't got rid of him sooner because the Partygate inquiry, they couldn't allow that to really conclude whilst he was still Prime Minister. So, you know, people really thought, you know, this would be done October, maybe November. <laughs> We're now into February 2023 and not only has the main witness, Boris Johnson, still not given his evidence to the Privileges Committee, but we don't yet even have a date. Last month, the reports that he would be given evidence in February. I thought, OK, it's taken a while, but OK, February sometime. Is it early February or late February? I'm not really sure. <laughs> now that it is February, I'm thinking, oh, when's it going to be? I'm now seeing reports it might not be until Easter. Although just before or just after, I don't know. But after so many delays, you, you just, I don't even think now, oh, right, round about Easter. I just think now, OK, which Easter? This year? Next year? The year after? You know, it just... a. a there is no timetable. Until I see a date set in stone, there is no timetable. If Boris Johnson is finally given evidence this Easter, let's say, it may actually end up falling on the first anniversary of the inquiry being ordered. It was ordered in April 2022. It's nearly a year ago. Can you imagine? An investigation is ordered by MPs and it takes a full year to actually get around to interview the main witness and suspect. And... and <sighs> It's not a criticism of the inquiry as such. Like, it's just, I'm not sure anyone saw that coming last summer. To an extent, the delays have been explained. They've been explained by the sheer mountain of documentary evidence handed over to the Privileges Committee, as well as the evidence not handed over. They've been, they have requested, for example, WhatsApp messages and they've been turned over blanks. Going, oh, sorry, we don't seem to have the records anymore. Oh, really? How convenient. And, you know, they are, uh, the committee are MPs. So they've got other duties as well. It's not like Parliament has engaged uh, a senior judge to work full time on this. They're MPs, they've got other duties. So pouring over all the documents as well as scheduling meetings to discuss it, which they're doing, that takes time to conduct the inquiry. They're also having to go through the written witness statements that had to be handed in last week. If there are more of those than originally anticipated, or if there's just more cross-referencing that has to be done with them, that could explain why the process is taking so much longer than we thought it would. But now I see there's a report in The Telegraph that witnesses who have submitted evidence will be named. In other words, Boris Johnson and his allies will know who said what. Now, this, of course, opens up the possibility of intimidation being employed by Johnson and his friends in the media, making it less likely witnesses will want to give a full and frank account in their submissions. You know, the article also made mention of the fact that Johnson's lawyers, well, the main one being Lord Panic, who is being paid for out of the public purse for no good reason, had made a second submission to the committee about the procedures. Now, this isn't news. We knew about this before Christmas. I talked about it before Christmas. But they're trying to say that Johnson's lawyers should be able to address the committee as a witness. But a couple of things about this. First, he's not actually a witness, is he? He had no involvement in the Downing Street parties. He had no involvement in Boris Johnson's statements in Parliament. He was engaged by Johnson after the inquiry had been launched and therefore after the alleged offences had been committed. So he's not a witness of any kind. Second, he has given a written submission to the inquiry, which the committee should probably publish at some point. However, if it's anything like the first submission... It will just be a PR stunt full of lies designed to persuade the public that Johnson's not getting a fair hearing, Paul Love. You know, the first submission, which was published without authority, for which they were slapped down, tried to claim that the committee would have to prove that Johnson knowingly lied to Parliament at the time in order to be found guilty. But this is not true. 
there are essentially two charges that are being investigated. The first is, yes, deliberately lying to Parliament at the time his mouth was flapping in front of MPs. But the second is failing to correct the record in a timely manner. So even if there's enough doubt that Johnson told the truth as he understood it, you know, like, let's say they think, OK, we can't categorically prove that he definitely told a lie at the time he was telling it. If it can be proved that he was later told that he'd misinformed Parliament and that he didn't make immediate efforts to correct the record, he's still guilty because he's guilty of allowing Parliament to be misled. That is still a breach of the ministerial code. And this is why I particularly disapprove of a quarter of a million pounds of public money being used to pay for Johnson's lawyers like this. Because it would be one thing if he was just receiving legal advice, which wouldn't cost anywhere near that amount. The money is being used to get lawyers to deliberately misrepresent what the inquiry is all about. Public money should not be used for that. And we didn't see a correction in this Telegraph article either, of course, who've been covering for their former employee for years now. And in then in other news, article in The Guardian this time, they're a little bit less interested in covering for Johnson, saying that the Met have been asked to reopen their investigation based on new information resulting from an ITV investigation. They turned up accusations of evidence being destroyed, officials colluding with each other before writing their statements, effectively falsifying their statements to the police. Obviously, we know that the police didn't want to go anywhere near the investigation from the start. Even when they were sort of compelled to, they still didn't actually in investigate the more obvious breaches, such as the ABBA party in Johnson's flat didn't go anywhere near that. They did the bare minimum. And although the Mets is, I suppose, under different leadership now, I don't think the culture really will have changed overnight. They'll still be resistant to reopening the investigation. They're certainly not going to do so just because new evidence came to light. They didn't open an investigation at all when there was loads of evidence out there, not until there was a lot of pressure on them to do so. But at some point, Boris Johnson will have to give his evidence to the committee. At some point, at that point, there will presumably be a bit of a media circus and the wider issues will be reported on again. I suppose there's going to be a bit of a public appetite for more information on Partygate. And the authorities may find themselves under pressure to explain why they're refusing to investigate when new information has turned to light. Why are they considering the case closed when the evidence they based their original investigation on, uh, well, may have been falsified? So, uh, you know, they may find themselves under pressure to reopen it again. We will see. But there we are. Those are the updates for this month. Next month, no doubt, there'll be more delays. We will see. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.